Today, we're going to be talking about one of the most frustrating problems when it comes to raising a puppy. I wonder what it could be. And that is nipping, biting, barking, all of the things that our puppies do that drive us absolutely crazy. Now, on my lap is this adorable little blue healer puppy. His name is Zeke. And uh, his owner, V, has come to visit with me today. And we are going to do a little private lesson to work on some of the naughty behaviors this cute little Zeke um, is doing. There we go, right on cue. I'm Cal McCann, welcome back to McCann Dogs. So he's not nipping and biting right now, but I would say he's being slightly obnoxious, right? Certainly, <laughs> yeah. So what we would do in this situation is use like, for me, if my dogs were barking, I would tell the dog quiet. And after I give the word that I want him to eventually listen to, I would apply some type of discipline. So we're gonna talk a little bit about how we're gonna do the discipline. There's a couple different ways that we're gonna do it. So essentially you're gonna use a verbal marker when he's wrong. And in the early stages, you're going to follow that with something physical. Now, I don't know if you just saw that, but I just went to put my hand on his nose just to kind of settle him for a second so I could talk. And as soon as I went to do that, I got biting, okay? Yeah. So I'm gonna just let him do this for a second so I can set the scene and then this is no longer going to be allowed to happen. Good. Okay, see it again? Mm -hmm. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I can do a couple of things. I really like to make sure that the puppies have a well-fit collar. He does point for you already. It's nice and snug. If I get two fingers in there, he's not going to be able to flip around and uh, do any kind of cra crazy acrobats. The second thing that I'm going to do is when I go to discipline him, I'm going to take my hand in his collar and I'm also going to grab a little tiny bit of his excess fur that he's going to grow into. We call this the scruff. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to hold him on either one side of his head or the other. And what's going to happen is the palm of my hand is going to sort of brace against his cheek. And why I'm being so detailed about this explanation is I need to hold him in a way that he can't nip me anymore. Mm -hmm. Now, when I do that, he is probably going to have a meltdown. Okay. Now, when I do this, I'm not going to yell or scream or do anything. I'm just going to be very quiet. And as soon as I see him start to go, I'm not getting anywhere and sort of relax, I'm going to release my grip just a little bit, not let go entirely, just release my grip. And then I'm going to praise him. So what basically I'm doing is saying you're wrong. And when he starts to give in to me a little bit, I'm going to say, good boy, that's right. Now, in the early stages, if they haven't had this done very much, um, when you go to praise them, they go for round two and then they go for round three. So what might uh, need to happen, you're getting uh, lots of uh, this on video here. Uh, what might need to happen is I might need to go through the process a couple times mm -hmm. until I have him settled. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to go for it now. The mama is putting a stop to this right now. So my hand's in his collar. The next time he goes to bite, I'm going to uh, correct him, and then I'm going to see what happens. Good boy. Good. Ah, knock it off. Okay, I'm going to hold. Now, this is common. The front paws will come over. Now, see how he's bringing his front paws up? I don't lift the puppy, dangle the puppy. I don't flick the puppy. I just simply hold until he settles. And I like to use my other hand to kind of get the dog calm. Now, this is a common thing they do. They flip. I'm going to lift him up when he does that. Knock it off. That's enough. Okay, so we have some subtle behavior. I'm going to release a little bit. Good boy. And now I'm going to praise. Good. Oh, that's a good choice. When I'm holding the collar and I'm disciplining, what I'm looking for is a couple different things. Sometimes they'll pin their ears back a little bit. Sometimes they'll um, avert their gaze. Sometimes they'll actually look at you, but they look at you with like, you know, the expression sad puppy eyes. They sort yeah. of go like, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. um, their mouth, like right now, see, he has like a really relaxed mouth. His ears are back a little bit. Um, he doesn't have, he's not holding any tension in his body. Those are the things that you're looking for. Because there was a few times there where I was holding his collar and he was being still but he was like this, like mm -hmm. ready to go again. And if I feel that in his body, I'm just going to continue holding until I see him go, oh, okay. And at that point, it's really important that I praise. And the reason why I'm being so specific about the timing is that this is not fun to do. It's also really hard to do, which is why people struggle with it. But often I find that either people... Um, they aren't firm enough or they don't have good enough technique so the dog can nip and bite and then we lose our confidence. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes people discipline, the dog starts to show that like, okay, I get it, I get it. And then they don't let go. And then the puppy goes, okay, like now I don't know what to do because I've showed you that I've, I'm good, but you just keep disciplining me. Yeah. So part of it is reading the body language a little bit. Now I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the body language. He's stopping, but he's not really giving me any mind. 
his whole brain is on what's going on. He's accepting it, but he's not really like, sorry. He's like, okay, fine. I'll stop until mm -hmm. the next time. Mm -hmm. That yawn is not being tired. That's called a stress yawn. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nothing to be worried about. What? Oh, good boy. That's wonderful choice. What I see in a stress yawn I don't get too worried about is that I'm, I'm making progress here. He's saying, oh, I don't really like this, but I guess I can handle it. But again, when we're disciplining, it can't all be you're bad, you're bad, you're bad, and shaking a puppy around like a rag doll. That's not what we're going for here. I also need to take the opportunity to find some up, find some time to let him know he's right. Good. There we go. So we have a little bit more of a submissive puppy now. Um, okay, let me talk to you about the leash technique. Zeek -doo. Yes, and when I'm going to feed him, I'm always going to make him turn towards me so he knows the good stuff's coming from me. Yeah. So we talked about the collar thing. Mm -hmm. If you need to go to the leash, which you can do at any time, you're going to hold the leash as if you're holding onto a baseball bat. So your thumbs are up, your baby fingers are down, and you're going to lift and hold like that. Um, and then I'll be able to tell you whether you need to continue holding or whether you need to release the pressure or not. I think that honestly, the best thing to do is to try. And if any time you're like, get me out of here, just pass them off and I, I'll take over. But I want to build your confidence yeah. so that you know what to do. Yeah. Here we go. Oh! Nice. Good. Now I'm going to intentionally take his collar right now. Yes. And reward because I don't want him to have a meltdown when I take his collar. Because I need to take his collar all the time. So you see he was a little bit worried there. So I'm going to take the food, put the food on his nose first this time. Now grab the hair. Yes. Good. And just associate food on nose. I'm not feeding. Take the collar first. Good boy. Yes. And then I can reward. So he starts to go, okay. Maybe you're not so bad after all. How about you come closer? Oh, oh, and giving me little tricks too. Yes. Okay. So what's actually really lovely about this puppy is his recovery is top notch. Excellent. Sometimes when you first start applying pressure and discipline, oh, he's trying all of the things. You're so sweet. Yes. When you try um, discipline for the first time, if the puppies are, are you know, a little bit selfish in it for themselves. You go to discipline, then they want nothing to do with you. The fact that he has no, doesn't have any relationship with me whatsoever. I've come in, doesn't know me. I've disciplined him. And he's sort of going, okay, I, I think I can move on. It means you have a really great puppy. And sometimes what happens when p puppies are biting, we think, oh my gosh, this is so frustrating. He's awful. He is a typical bratty young puppy that doesn't know any better. Um, and being a cattle dog, they can be a little bit tenacious sometimes. You're tenacious, you're strong. But they also can be super duper fun because they have tons of energy, they want to do stuff. So if you can kind of get them on the right track, they're like way more fun than having a bump on a log for a dog. Like he's going to want to so. do stuff, right? Oh, yeah. But we just got to get them organized. And I would hold him a little firmer. There we go. Okay, just hold on for a second. I don't have his scruff. I just have his collar. Yeah, that's okay. And if you feel like he can move around too much, you are going to grab his scruff. The scruff does not hurt him at all because all extra fur he's going to grow into yeah, anyways. Just uh, like his mom would so, have. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So you see how he just gnawed there? Mm -hmm. I would give him a little shake for that too. Okay, take okay. over. You got it. Yep. Good. And then if he feels settled, release the scruff, but don't release the collar. Yep, you can hold the collar now. Good. You know, lift him up. Don't let him do that. Right up. Quick, 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 quick. Yep, good. Could be. You lift him up again. Just up to his sort of sitting or standing. Yep, perfect. Good. Look at you with the opposite hand. Good, <laughs> good, good. But okay, you can release your tension a little bit. Just praise him with your voice. Good, good boy. boy. Good. good. Okay, don't let go with this hand. You can let him lie down now. And the reason why it's okay, do you feel the tension leaving his body now? Just who's up? Did yeah. you lay down that time? There. Good. Okay, bring him out in front of you. The going to the beside is a bit of an avoidance thing as well. There. Okay, keep holding his collar. Good. Good. Okay, I'm going to give you a little treat. I might have taken the wind out of his sails a little bit here. You can feed him so that the good stuff comes from you. Good boy. Good. Okay, that was pretty good. You could be a little firmer. Okay. Okay? But it's because you haven't really done it yet. What, whenever we go through this with people, people are always worried about hurting the dog. It will, it's not in your nature to hurt him. You would never do it firm enough to hurt him. So yeah. dude, that is not a concern. So don't worry about that. Good boy. Okay. I want you to try now, maybe like while you're holding the collar with this hand, keep your grip, mm -hmm. maybe try holding on to one of his paws. Paw? Yeah. Good. Ah. Oh. So then see when he did that, ah. give him a little shake like that when he does that. Okay. Knock it off. Okay. Try again. Paw? Ah. Knock it off. 
Go ahead, okay, this time don't ask him for the pot, just simply pick it up. Yep, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. My thing, like my um, reaction is It's a little slow. bit slow, but it's okay. You're, you're getting better every time. Go to that, look at that, good, you're making some change. Go ahead. Go ahead, now just take a hold of it again. The paw. Yep. Yes. Oh, good good. Boy. Very good boy. Okay, take a hold again. Yes. Oh. I'm going to feed him facing you. I actually really like that he give, gave you eye contact there. I'm going to actually put this beside you here so you can grab it. Okay, grab his paw again. Yeah. Good. No, mou no, no, no mouthing. So even if he mouths, ah, knock it off. Okay. Don't wait till you get full-blown teeth. Because if you wait until he's actually gnawing, yeah. you're going to have to do big, big discipline. If he just threatens you, hey, you can just give a little one. Okay, the goal so is to only have to do little ones. If he's like sniffing my hands. Sniffing is okay. But if he like open mouths towards you, that's okay. Go. Yeah, that's good. 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 good job. Good. And then just like a nitpicky timing thing, it would be ideal is as you're holding his paw and he's not giving a reaction to say yes at that moment so okay. that you're sort of capturing that moment. Let's try one more time. Hold that paw again. Ah, ah, ah. That's it. Good. There. Yes. <laughs> it's okay. Hey, yes. Good. good. Okay, go ahead and reward him and just draw his attention to you. All right. Nice. Good, job. good. Okay, and then let's release him. Give him a break for a second. All good. Right. That was pretty good, bud, bud. When you're going to touch his paws or when you're going to, you know, uh, clip his toenails or wipe his paws or whatever you're doing where you need to touch him, ideally, you don't really want him to turn his head towards you at all. You want him just to go, okay, I'm going to chill out and just let you do my thing. So even if he turns his head towards you, I wouldn't, ah, knock it off. I just yeah. might be like, hey, just leave it. Yeah. I would just say it calmly. I would just sort of readjust his collar, not in a disciplinary way, almost like a resetting type of way. So if you're not sure, I would just encourage him to move his head away by using his collar. Mm -hmm. And then if you feel any contact, then I would discipline a bit more. If you actually get biting or holding on to that, then I would discipline more. So you can kind of go up in levels. Hi, Bubba. Depending on what you need. Hello, good boy. Now he does chew on the towel too. Yes. Okay. So the same thing for, dis uh, for discipline can be used for barking, can be used for chewing on the towels. If he gets a shoe in his mouth, whatever it might be, your steps are always going to be first, use your voice. So whatever sound or word. So if it was like chewing on the towel, I would probably say, ah, ah or something like that, yeah. or whatever you want, yeah. like whatever makes sense for you. Yeah. It really doesn't matter what I you use. I usually do that with, like with my cats too. So yeah. So whatever, whatever makes sense, whatever's going to come out of your mouth, naturally is what you should do because mm -hmm. you'll just to teach him like if I wanted to teach my dog that spaghetti was their discipline word I could do that if I wanted the words don't matter mm -hmm. it's about what I train them to do afterwards so you'll do your sound and then from there you'll follow through so if it's the towel in his mouth the first thing I would do is go to the line and I would put my hand in the collar and I would try to get the towel out of his mouth now likely when you do that he's gonna go tug like this is so much fun oh yeah and so when that happens I would just lift up on the collar and hold and then I wouldn't actually try to pull the towel out of the mouth mm -hmm. I would just let the towel be like still and boring and like kind of dangly mm -hmm. because if he sort of goes well this isn't really fun anymore and he releases then I can put the towel off to the side and then I can maybe get a treat or I can ask him to sit or do something that kind of puts me in the driver's seat again mm -hmm. and then I can reward him for more focus um, and if you need to that zip line technique is going to be really helpful so if he has something in his mouth I can slide my hand down the leash into his collar mm -hmm. so that I'm not going to get um, I'd start up here and then shh down. Yep. Okay. How I hold him. So see how he's sitting with his back to me. I like to keep the dog in front and facing me like this. It just gives me a bit more of a power position that when we first started out, he was at your side. It felt kind of awkward. Mm -hmm. It was awkward more because where he was in relationship to you. So if you just sort of swing him out in front, like you did, you'll feel a little bit more in control of the situation. He's being an angel now. No. Yeah. No, but why is because there's follow through, there's follow through, those follow through. And every time he's gone to bike, uh, bark and pull, I've kind of told him, hey, knock it off. And yeah. he's like, oh, okay. Now, I can't make him do this forever because he's a puppy. Uh, but, you know, while he's sitting, I'm giving him pets. I'm giving him the occasional treat. I'm giving him good positive reinforcement. Most dogs, hi, Yever. <laughs> Most dogs, they just... They're not actually worried so much about the discipline itself. They just want clarity. Mm -hmm. They want black and white stuff. And when we start to 
blur the rules, they start to go, okay, well, am I supposed to be the one in charge then? So like, maybe I can try to, you know, do this. I can try to do that. And you give them an inch, they take them out, especially a dog, you know, like a, uh, like a blue healer. Because mm-hmm. um, they're typically pretty confident, full of themselves types of, of dogs. That's why they can go after cattle and be just fine. Yeah. Very cheap A. <laughs> yeah. Um, but they also can be so sweet. They're very smart and they can make excellent choices with good, um, with good direction. If you are doing this discipline and this continues past, you know, the next month or so, there's something a bit off. Mm -hmm. So this should be something that, you know, not everything is going to be fixed, but like the nipping and biting, you should be able to fix that literally within a couple sessions. If he sort of goes like after today, he probably won't nip me anymore. Yeah. Because he's sort of like, I know I'm not allowed to. And then they're like, okay, there's the rules set. Got it. Um, It's sometimes when we're wishy-washy or we're not consistent or our timing's off or whatever. And again, you're learning. You are not going to be a pro after today, but you're going to get better as you get more confident. Mm -hmm. And the more you do it, the easier it's going to become because he's not going to feel like he can fight you. Because right now he's got no history with me. Um, he's not snuggled with me on a couch. He doesn't like, there's no relationship there Mm -hmm. with you guys. It's a bit different because you love him. And I mean, I love my dogs too. I want to kiss and hold them and all of those things. So you have to kind of get over that past stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, what I'm getting to though, is that the discipline is really important, but it also means that all of the other stuff is equally as important for building him up and teaching him what he should do. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people think that nipping is going to be solved by giving them a big correction. And that is just not the case because you need to tell them also what they should be doing and you need to be setting him up so that he's not so like, if he's coming and jumping at your arm or whatever thing that, whatever that situation is, is that he's uh, nipping. Why is that happening in the first place? And is there something that you could do differently to control him that could prevent him from doing that? And if that doesn't happen and he decides to nip anyways, game over, you're going to get disciplined for it. But think about how, what could I do in this scenario that could maybe teach him to have a, a, a different idea of his behavior so that I'm not like ah, 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 all the time, like exactly. nobody wants to do that either. Mm-hmm. So I uh, think about the structure and the balance so that he's getting both pieces of the puzzle. Today, we talked a lot about nipping and biting with our young puppies, but really the bigger issue here is leadership. So if you want to learn a little bit more about leadership, check out that video right there. On that note, I'm Kale. This is Zeke. Happy training.